morning, everyone. We are back in Habits Week. Um, change that there. Okay. We're back in Habits Week. Uh, we have today and tomorrow on Habits. So where we are with Habits, go ahead and watch. I won't repeat uh, Monday, Tuesdays, why we should care about Habits so much and how we want to start thinking about Habits differently. Uh, and then yesterday, I introduced the concept of how any behavior happens, like the behavior equation from BJ Fogg's behavior model. Um, and that is behavior equals the combination of motivation, ability, and prompt. You can watch yesterday's video for that. Um, so today we're going to talk, today and tomorrow, we're going to talk a little bit about how to actually change those habits, right? If we're going to work with the brain to change the habits, what does that actually look like? So as I mentioned yesterday, Go back and watch that. When we're talking about a behavior and the equation for it is no behavior happens without number one, a prompt, but then the combination of motivation and ability. And yesterday I talked about how truly, even though we want things, that combination of motivation and ability waxes and wanes throughout the day and all of the variables in the environment, right? So what we always want to be looking at. So first I'll just say, and we know that no behavior happens without, number one, a prompt, right? Always a prompt. But then the combination of motivation and ability. If you really think about it, um, the variable of motivation is pretty unreliable. Uh, and you know this because sometimes you're motivated to eat healthy. Sometimes you're motivated to go to the gym. Sometimes you're motivated to go for a walk. Sometimes you're not, right? Sometimes you're motivated to sit on the couch. Sometimes you're motivated to get up, right? So your motivation really, really waxes and wanes a lot throughout the day and throughout the environment, given the different variables, right? What is a more reliable resource to rely upon is your ability. And when we're talking about ability, what we're really looking at is how easy can I make this thing that I want to do? How easy, uh, how, how can I increase my ability to do it? And the way that's most effective to do that is to make the thing that you want to do super, 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 super easy. So as we were talking about yesterday, when we're talking about hitting the snooze button or scrolling on Facebook for your notifications or whatever, those things are real easy. One touch, one, you know, one movement. Um, those things are really easy. And when things are really easy, it triggers our brain. Yep. Go that route because the brain likes easy. The brain likes things that are not going to take a whole lot of components and variables and energy in order to execute. Okay. So again, if we're going on the work of BJ Fogg, who's a behavior scientist out of Stanford and who came up with the tiny habits procedure, um, there's a book of the same name. It's a really, really good read. I actually am tiny habits certified by him um, and have worked with you know BJ in that realm. And uh, I, I really, really believe in the system. In fact, it was a system uh, when I was talking to him, uh, I, I was on the phone with him at one point and um, I'd let him know, like I'm using parts of this system. I just, I didn't, I didn't know. This was before his book came out. Uh, I didn't know that there was an operationalized way to do this. And so BJ really operationalized what makes sense from a brain perspective. So that's what I grab. That's why I gravitated towards his program is because I thought, oh my gosh, I'm already using these skills. It's amazing. He really operationalized this process and it, and it really works. So both his behavior design process and his tiny habit process um, really, really works. I utilize it in all of my programs. Um, I do it in all of my coaching. So I'm going to give you a tidbit of it. So in order to make a behavior happen, we want to make it really, really easy to do. Now, here's the key. What we are trying to accomplish is the completion of the behavior, right? Is the consistency of it not accomplishment of the goal. So here's what I mean is that um, if you have a goal to drink 80 ounces of water a day, right? Your goal is 80 ounces of water, but you never drink that much. Then what we want to design for is a habit of you starting to sip water. Okay. So what we end up doing is we focus on the goal. Did I drink 80 ounces or not? But truly we are not in the habit of sipping water throughout the day. So we're not going to get to 80 ounces. So what we want to do is make it consistent 
that we are a person who sips water. And if we make it consistent that we are a person who sips water, we are much, 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 much more likely to complete the 80 ounces, which means we need to have the water in the right place at the right time. We need to have the access and ability to sip water, those kinds of things. The problem we all do uh, from a, you know, we're, we're human here is that we focus too much on the goal. Like, okay, I have a goal to drink 80 ounces of water. Surely that's going to stay top of mind and I'm going to do it. For most people, that's not how it works. We need to create a consistent behavior pattern. And once we create the consistent behavior pattern, we are much more likely to accomplish our goal, okay? Said a different way, there are um, oftentimes some of the goals that I hear with, with my clients are that they wanna you know, order differently when they're eating out at a restaurant, right? And so rather than having a goal of, oh, I'm gonna stick to my calorie goal, they need to consistently become the type of person who looks ahead at what's at the restaurant, right? They need to consistently become the type of person who, while looking at the menu, thinks about what type of food is most nourishing to them or, you know, fits their goals or whatever. So instead of going, did I, or didn't I meet my calorie goals? It becomes what type of person with what type of habit do I need to become in order to eat this way at a restaurant? Make sense? Following me there? Okay. How do I do this? So in BJ Fogg's tiny habits recipe, the recipe looks like this. After I blank, I will blank and then I will celebrate. Super, super simple recipe. Your blanks are after I, what's called an anchor moment, I will tiny behavior and then I will celebrate. After I anchor moment, I will tiny behavior and then I will celebrate. So what does anchor moment, tiny behavior, celebrate mean? Anchor moments are moments that you already do in your life without having to think about them. There are many, 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 many anchor moments in your life. And, and these are the moments that happen without you needing any brain power to complete them. Do you put your feet on the floor in the morning? Do you brush your teeth? Do you make your coffee? Do you do your dishes? Do you open the refrigerator? Do you turn off the lights? Do you put your pants on? Do you put a shirt on, right? So there's all kinds of things that you already do in your life that you don't have to think about. Those are your anchor moments. And the reason why we attach a tiny behavior to an anchor moment is because that anchor moment becomes your prompt. Remember, behavior equals motivation, ability, and prompt. That anchor moment becomes your prompt to do something, okay? For example, let's say you want to drink 80 ounces of water a day, right? A tiny behavior that would lead you to being more likely to drink 80 ounces of water might be to fill up your water bottle, right? Fill up your water bottle full of water so that you can carry it with you throughout the day, okay? Your anchor moment might be waiting for your coffee to brew in the morning. It might be turning the lights on in the kitchen when you get up in the morning. I don't know. You all will have your own anchor moments. And so this is what the formula would look like. After I put my coffee mug uh, under the Keurig, whatever, I will fill up my water bottle for the day and then I will celebrate. Okay. I had another client who was, you know, she wanted to drink more water and she sat at a desk, you know, kind of all day long. And her tiny habit became after I get up from my chair, I will take a sip of water and then I will celebrate. So tiny behaviors can be what are called starter steps or make it tiny. A starter step would be take a sip of water, right? A tiny behavior would be fill up my water bottle, okay? The starter step is sort of like, I'm gonna take the first step in drinking some water right now. I'm gonna take a sip, right? The tiny behavior, like a behavior that I want to accomplish is I will fill up my water bottle. 
Both of those lead you to being more likely that you will drink water throughout the day. If you have a full water bottle that comes with you, then you'll be more likely to drink it. If you start taking a sip of water, you're more likely to drink more, okay? So your tiny habit looks like after I put my coffee mug in the coffee machine, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you do with your coffee mug. Um, after I put my coffee mug in the machine, I will fill up my water bottle and then I will celebrate. And the celebration piece is where you get that little hit of dopamine that says, oh, this feels good. I should do this more, right? And the celebration can just look like, hey, great job, you did it. Or yay, I did that. Or whatever type of celebration that feels authentic to you. After I anchor moment, I will tiny habit and then I will celebrate. Now you can do this for any habit that you're trying to create. Um, let's say you want to enter your food into your food logging system. After I um, pull my chair out to sit down for my meal, I will open up my calorie tracking app and then I will celebrate. Now notice, I'm not asking you to complete the goal. Meaning if your goal is to track food, I'm not asking you to complete the goal. I'm asking you to create consistency in your life in a place where that goal can fit in. Now, tomorrow I'm going to tell you a little bit of the parameters around this because there are some like, you know, it needs to be time and place appropriate or it needs to be, um, you know, how often do you want to do it appropriate? There's some, there's some variables that I'm going to stick into this, but for the basic model, after I anchor moment, I will, tiny behavior, then I will celebrate. Okay. So again, when my client was getting up from her chair and drinking a sip of water, she wasn't accomplishing the 80 ounces goal. She was being consistent with taking a sip of water when she got up from her chair. And that consistency is the thing that gets you to the goal accomplishment. Okay. So we're designing for consistency, not completion of the goal. All right. You've got your behavior model is no behavior happens without the combination of motivation, ability, and prompt. In order to create more um, effective or efficiency in creating new behaviors, we want to use the tiny habits model, which is anchor moment. After I anchor moment, I will tiny behavior, and then I will celebrate. Anchor it to a prompt. That anchor becomes your prompt, right? Anchor becomes your prompt. I said that correctly. That anchor becomes your prompt. Tiny habit, super, super tiny makes it easy to do. That's actually one thing I didn't say that I want to say really clearly. Tiny habit is tiny. Notice I said sip of water, fill up my water bottle, put my running shoes on, lay out my clothes for the next day, not go on a 20 minute run, not do 35 push ups. A tiny habit should be something that you can accomplish in 30 seconds or less, no matter if you are sick in bed with the flu, okay? I say the sick in bed with the flu part because some people will say to me, I'm going to do 35 push-ups. If you were sick in bed with the flu, could you do 35 push-ups? Probably not. Could you do two? Maybe, right? So 30 seconds or less that you could do even if you had the flu, Okay. Um, that's a tiny habit because we are designing for consistency and what creates consistency for the brain. It needs to be easy to do, right? Remember, we talked about the ability. We're making it super, 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 super easy to do so that the brain naturally gravitates towards doing it because super easy to do, no problem, okay? Tomorrow, I will cover the, the variables that we want to make sure we're thinking about when we're creating a tiny habits recipe, um, but hopefully you can start thinking about, okay, there's a habit that I'd like to create. I had you start thinking about your habits on Monday and Tuesday. Here's a habit that I'd like to create. How do I make it super, super easy for me to do so that my brain can catch on to that and go, oh yeah, I want to do that thing. We design for the consistency. Once we design for the consistency, we are much more likely to complete the habit. All right. If you have questions about this, please feel free to reach out to me. And if you have any questions, um, like if you'd like me to uh, look at your habits or you have any questions about wanting to kind of consult about habits, just reach out. Um, we'll see what we can do. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow.